hello there. Well, I'm in the calendar area again, just outside Kilmahog. Um, the last video that I did at walk around Loch Venachar, um, towards the end of that walk, I, I passed under a, a couple of features that I, I kind of wanted to have a look at for a while, and uh, I decided just to do that uh, today. Um, this is one of those features, a big boulder here. It's called Samson's Stone, sometimes also referred to as Samson's Putting Stone. Um, you can see it mentioned on first edition Northern and Survey maps as Samson's Stone. Um, when Northern and Survey created that first edition in the middle of the 19th century, they didn't make stuff up. You know, they wouldn't just have seen this big boulder and thought, we'll just call that Samson's Stone. There must have been an oral tradition in the area uh, that it was already called that, probably long before then. It's, it's probably what you would term a glacial erratic, and I had to look that up as well. Um, a glacial erratic is apparently a kind of big boulder that's been moved from somewhere else at the head of a great flow of ice during some past ice age. And I think we've had ice ages up here in Scotland probably about 10,000 years ago and maybe tens of thousands of years before that. And it must have, the, the ice must have been pretty strong flowing to move that thing. <laughs> My God. Yeah. You wouldn't want to be in the way of all that. And I suppose in the old days they probably had never heard of glacial erratics. And they would have looked at this big stone and thought, yeah, must have been Samson. I think Samson was in the Bible, wasn't he? I was trying to figure out how folk in the old days would know who Samson was. But I think Samson was maybe in the Bible, was he? Samson and Delilah? Del Delilah? Delilah? I could be getting mixed up here. But anyway. Um, the, the other thing that I wanted to have a look at, which is just on the other side of this big boulder, is the Dunmore Hill Fort. Uh, an Iron Age hill fort. Some sources suggest that it may have been occupied at one time by a, a pretty uh, high-ranking Pictish person, some great leader among the Picts. I, I didn't think the Picts came down this far or so far south and so far west. I always thought the Picts were generally kind of in the area to, in the east of Scotland, sort of north of... Um, the River Forth and Fife and north of that. I didn't think they were in this area. That's not to say they weren't. But, um, you sort of wonder if, um, if Dunmore Hillfort was occupied when the Romans swept into this area as they did uh, down at Bow Castle. The, the Romans had a a fort. I don't know how much of a fort it was. I think I might have said before that, you know, if the Romans built a camp, they would probably have fortif fortified it to a certain extent, whether with banks and ditches and such like. I'm not sure at what stage a fortified camp becomes a fort, but whatever, you know, the Romans were certainly here. They would have seen this hill fort. As you'll see, I think, later on, in addition to a number of very impressive uh, earthen uh, banks, concentric banks, given a really good uh, defence to, to, to the people who lived inside the fort, uh, they would also have a wooden palisades or fences on top of those banks to give additional uh, defence and protection for those inside. The Romans, when they swept into this area, way down there, would have seen this fort. This was probably a fort that was meant to be seen and uh, it was up here because it could see what was going on. The folk in the fort could see what was going on down there. Pretty much control what you might say would be a pretty major uh, route towards that, that further north, the highland area. Which is exactly why the Romans would have had their, uh, their fort down there. 
to do the exact same, just to control movement. Um, if the fort was occupied when the Romans got here, I don't know what would have happened. No matter how good your defences are, in a, what I think is a fairly smallish fort, it's not a huge uh, fortification or living area here, um, you wouldn't have stood any chance against the Roman army. Uh, if you'd put up any sort of futile defence, I think you would just have been slaughtered. And the only way you could probably survive would, would have been to perhaps leave the fort and hide for a while or um, come to some arrangement with the Romans. Maybe you could supply things to them, food or something, I'm not sure. But uh, either way, you weren't going to win against the Romans. Um, so we'll have a look at that fort, as I say, very shortly. This is a short walk today, nothing like a wander around Loch Fenachar. Just a few miles and I'll be sitting about, doing a lot of dreaming. I'm good at that. I think sometimes we all feel as if we belong somewhere. And where we think we belong, or where we feel we belong, is not always where we live. I live in Glasgow, it's always been my home, I just, every time I come out this way I, I feel that I belong here, because no matter where I am in central Scotland, when I see Ben Leddy and I, I just know that that's, that is my home, that area. And my ancestors on one side of the family occupied this a fairly large area in this part of central Scotland. Whether at Thornhill uh, near Dune, I can see a grave there. And also the Strathair area further north and Bulquidder just a little further north from that. And again at Bulquidder I can see a grave belonging to my ancestor. So I have always felt that this was where I belonged. This was my home. And you know, you never, perhaps my ancestors occupied a hill fort that we're just about to have a look at. I think it's unlikely, but you never know. Either way, I have come home.
Well, th this is one of a number of uh, banks and ditches surrounding this hill fort. I think there's about four. Um, and as I think I perhaps said earlier, you can have as many banks and ditches as you want. But I think, I haven't been at the top yet, but I think the area up there is actually fairly small. You're not going to get that many people living in there. I think there's a suggestion that maybe there was three hot circles, maybe pretty big ones. But, uh, you know, if, you, if the Romans are coming up here and they want to take your, your hill fort, they'll take it. No matter how many banks and ditches you've got, or wooden palisades that you can hide behind. You're just going to have to come to some arrangement with them. Surrender, or you'll just be dead. It's as simple as that. But this is very impressive. The banks and ditches are fairly well defined. I'll, I'll go up to the top here and see just exactly how this looks. Yeah, the, the area at the top is fairly small and as I suggested earlier, I think it, there has been some reports about maybe or suggestions of perhaps uh, three hut circles at the top. And even if there were pretty big hut circles, you're not really going to get that many people there. It's not a huge defensive force. And I think, and I've seen other hill forts and I think quite often it is the case that you'll get the, the leaders of that particular group of people living at a very highly defended area right at the top of the hill and the bulk of the population of that group of people will stay in lower ground in the hut circles in a lower area um, and in times of trouble they can perhaps all then take themselves up to the top behind the defences and uh, do their best to uh, defend the fort. Um, I, I, I'm not instantly seeing any kind of flattish area around this that would suggest to me that that's where all these people would have lived. There is a smaller hillock just behind me, which I, I kind of wonder about, and I remember seeing it in the map, and I, kind of, I, I wonder if perhaps that could have been one area. A lot of this ground might have been quite wet, you know, so maybe you'd want to have a wee bit of height to stay out of the, the damp stuff. But I, I think there's it's probably no doubt that there would have been hut circles in a larger population in lower ground just off this uh, main hill fort. Where that would have been, there you go, I don't know. You can only guess. Ground's a wee bit too wet for sitting down. Um, as per a request, this is a mutton pie. Here we go. It's got a slightly burnt look about it. I think we'll just call that well fired.
Mm. Very tasty. So it's been quite a short walk and a short video today. I just wanted to have a look at these two features. As soon as it arrived on the, the, the footpath, there was a whole bunch of geese went flying off somewhere. And all along the walk and cycleway from Calder towards Kilmahog, there was lots of birds twittering and fluttering about the place. It's a kind of it's spring, you know. I think that's what's happening. <laughs> spring has sprung. Little flowers are out and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little glimpse into the past. Hello there. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm Eddie Burns. Take care.